This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Well, if you've been working in Maya for a number of years, then you have kind of figured out by now that um, out of this Maya has replaced Mental Ray with Arnold in Maya 2017. Now, although Arnold is very cool and you can get great results, I'm very much used to working with Mental Ray and I kind of miss it. So I was really, really happy when NVIDIA announced that they are working on a mental ray for Maya 2017. And I am actually one of the beta testers. So it's really cool. Okay. So I decided to kind of recreate a um, tutorial that I saw a long time ago on digital tutors back when digital tutors still had that name. Uh, they're now a plural site, I think. And um, they talked about the mental ray material and how you can tweak that and pretty much create anything you want using that MIA material. So that's what this uh, video is about. I'll uh, put a link below towards uh, Pluralsight because fair is fair. They came up with the tutorial first. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And that said, let's jump in and see what we got. Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. Well, this video is for those of you who are using Maya and have a mental ray, uh, which is uh, you know pretty much up to Maya 2016. Or if you have Maya 2017, then you should pay attention as well. Uh, the reason why is that uh, the standard renderer in Maya 2017 is now Arnold. Uh, but for those of you who are big fans of mental ray, uh, NVIDIA is working on a new release. It's now in beta and uh, I'm fortunate enough to be one of the uh, beta testers. Uh, so Mental Ray will be available for Maya 2017. So I thought that would be a good opportunity to uh, kind of uh, refresh our minds related to the um, Mental Ray materials that can be used and why we should use them. Okay. So what I did is I set up a pretty basic scene here. It's just a uh, a kind of a sample uh, ball here that we can use for our materials uh, on the floor and I added an HDRI image of uh, arches which is uh, pretty cool and I set up a bookmark so if we go to bookmark and select new and there we go okay so this is what we're going to use to uh, display our materials and our settings I'll just uh, close this out now uh, for us to uh, render anything in Mental Ray, we have to have Mental Ray loaded, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, Render Settings uh, up here. And here you have the option to choose my software, hardware, and so forth. And like I said, I have the new NVIDIA Mental Ray uh, plugin loaded. Uh, if you have my 2017, you probably don't have that yet, but stay tuned. Uh, if you have a previous version of my, you have. So make sure you have Mental Ray selected. And if you do not have that in your list, go up to uh, Windows, uh, go to Settings and Preferences, and go to your Plugin Manager, and scroll down and look for Maya to Mental Ray .mll. And here it is, and make sure it's loaded. And if you want it to auto load next time, select that as well. Okay, cool. Now, um, do you uh, necessarily need to use a mental ray material when rendering a mental ray? No, you do not. And I'll show you. I'll just uh, right click, go to assign new material. We'll do a default Lambert, just a gray Lambert. And we're going to go up here and we're going to render the current frame. Okay, here we go. That shouldn't take too long because we're going to be doing a lot of rendering in this uh, video. Yeah, there it is. And you can see that it's uh, just our default gray. So that works fine in itself. Now, the thing is that the materials that have been um, supplied with Mental Ray, they are more physically accurate. So they contain information that is more related to the real world. So that's what we're going to use. Okay, so instead of our standard Lambert here, and I'll just uh, save that for comparison, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a Mental Ray material. So we're going to close that out. I'll just uh, close this out as well. We're going to right click, assign new material. And I'm going to look for a mental ray material uh, right here. And this, let's see, I'm going to go with the MIA material X. That's the one we're going to use. Now that material can almost be configured to anything you want. 
if you want to use it for wood, glass, plastic, metal, whatever, okay? That's why it's so uh, diverse, okay? So we have that set up. We haven't changed anything yet, and we're just gonna do a new render just for comparison. And we'll give that a sec. And it is uh, quite reflective, as you can see. We'll just wait until that's done. And because we're gonna be doing quite a lot of rendering here, I'll just uh, pause during renders so you guys don't have to wait for that, okay? Okay, there you have it. There is our default MIA material. And uh, you can see, like I said, it's quite reflective. Uh, looks okay. And if we just uh, compare that to our Lambert, you can see quite different, okay? So now let's go in and check out our material and see what we can play with, okay? So we're gonna go into the attribute editor. We're gonna hit Control A to pull that up uh, with our object selected, and we're gonna go to the MIA material, okay? I'm just gonna scroll all the way up. Now, if we start here in our diffuse, we can start by adding a color, okay? So we can just hit this uh, uh, little cube right here, and we can decide on, not that cube, sorry, on this cube, and we can decide on the color that we want. So let's, uh, I don't know, we'll find something um, blue, that's kind of cool, okay? So we're just gonna take this blue color, maybe a bit more blue than that. That's fine. And let's do a new render. Here we go. Just save that for comparison. And I'll pause that again. All right, there you have it. So we can clearly see that color came up nicely. And uh, next one in line here is the weight. Now, the weight pretty much means how much uh, blue do you want? Do you want all or nothing? Now, that doesn't make sense, you would think, uh, but later on I'll explain that because uh, when you start to add uh, transparency details, you don't necessarily want that blue to be available, okay? So we're gonna explain that later, all right? So the next one, roughness. If we look at our little swatch here and we start to increase that roughness, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's starting to change somewhat. So what I'll do is I'll set this to halfway so I can demonstrate, all right? I'll save this for comparison once again, and we'll do a new render. Here we go. All right, so that one's done. Now, if we step back one image, you can clearly see the difference depending on how rough you want that to be. So it's kind of toning it down a little bit, if you will, all right? Now, as far as our reflection color, we can change that as well. Um, we can clearly see that we have a white reflection right now. So let's just uh, change that to, I don't know, just for demonstration purposes, we'll make it really red. And already in our little uh, example here, you can see what will happen if we do that. So we'll just uh, render that as well, and uh, I'll show you. So we're gonna save that out. Here we go again. Well, like I uh, said, you would see that reflection changing and we'll just uh, change that back to white. And there we go. And then the reflectivity, if we crank that up, you can uh, see already in our example what will happen there if we do that. So we'll just do an example of that as well. We'll crank that way up. I'll save this for comparison. And here we go. Okay, that render has been done, and you can see that that uh, turned, out, uh, turned out quite uh, shiny. And the next one in line is the glossiness. Now, the glossiness is related to how blurry your reflection is, okay? So it's uh, way up at one right now, and um, again, you know, it's maybe hard for you guys to see this here, but what we'll do is we'll uh, take that, uh, where do you go, where do you go, where do you go, where do you go? We'll take that glossiness down. Yeah, here it is. Uh, almost to zero, close to zero anyway. And uh, let's do uh, a save for comparison and we'll render that one out so I can show you. Here we go. And there you have it. Well, you can see that the material looks quite different and we'll just go back one step. Here we go, very, very different. So the reflection has been made very, very blurry. Now, one of the things that happens when you do that, and it's maybe kind of hard to see, but 
down here in this area, you see a lot of noise has been created. And if you kind of want to fix that, you need to bump up the uh, glossy sample rate, okay? Now that's going to be a huge impact on your uh, render time, so be careful with that. But if you want this to be cleaner, and I'm not going to demonstrate that because it will take forever, uh, but if you bump this up to let's say 20 or 25 or so, you should have less issues with that, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set back my uh, glossy uh, value here and we'll do a quick render and we'll do that so I can demonstrate what it means when we use the highlight only section here. Okay, so the glossiness is back up to where it was. We're going to do a new render. Save that for comparison. Here we go. Okay, and we're back uh, where we were, and I'll just uh, show you one and two, here we go. So that's that, and what we can do here is we can decide to select highlights only, and I'll show you what happens, and then I'll explain why, okay? So I got that selected, we're gonna save this for comparison, and we're gonna render this guy. Okay, and here we go. And I'll just show you the difference between the two if I go back one step. You can see that here we have the highlight and we also have all the reflection going on on our object, okay? If we go back to the last render, we only have the highlights. Now, what's the point of that and why would you want to do that anyway? Well, on this simple object, it's not such a big issue, but if you have a more complex environment, uh, sometimes you will select that so you will shorten your render time and uh, calculating reflections is uh, a big deal. So that's why you could use that. Okay, so on to the next one. Okay guys, we're gonna switch back to the settings that we wanted. Let's see, uh, that's off, that's fine. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to the refraction settings. Now that's one of my favorite parts because that's where we can simulate glass, okay? Now the thing is that every material that has light go straight through it has a, uh, or partially go through it, has a refraction index. And online you can find uh, charts and lists of refraction uh, indexes or indices or whatever that's called. Uh, so uh, thick glass will have a refraction index, uh, transparent plastic and so forth. Now, usually they're somewhere between, I would say 1.3 and 1.5. And uh, I think glass is 1.44, something like that. So what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, set this to 1.44. Uh, the color, we're going to leave that at white. We're going to set the transparency way up. And as we bring that way up, you can see that this turns quite transparent. And we're going to leave the glossiness as is. Okay. Uh, let's save this for comparison. We're going to render this again. Here we go. All right, guys, here it is. Uh, and here you can see two things. One, you see a very faint blue glare on our glass. And that is because of our original uh, blue color on the diffuse here. And that's where that weight thing comes in. You remember that I explained that you can tone down the weight as to what amount of blue we actually want. So we don't want that blue in this glass here. So we're gonna bring that way, way down, all the way to zero. And we shouldn't have a problem there. And uh, what I want to uh, demonstrate to you as well is that when we chose this refraction, it, refraction index of 1.44, you see that the effect is that the thickness of the glass distorts um, the seams of the, uh, the floor here. And if you set that all the way down to zero, you will get something that looks quite different. So I set the weight down to zero uh, to get rid of that blue and we'll do that first and then I'll demonstrate what happens when we tone down that re reflection value, okay? So uh, let's render again, here we go. Save for comparison and render. Okay guys, that uh, render is done. Uh, I'm just looking to compare this and uh, actually I can see the difference but it's very, very minimal uh, because of um, the blue that is actually in the sky of the HRI image that I'm using. So you don't see a huge difference. I can barely see it on my screen, so I'm not sure if you guys can, but uh, trust me, it will eliminate that uh, 
in a blue color as far as weight is concerned. And then the next one that I promised you guys is to set the index of refraction to zero, okay? Now, like I said, you have uh, charts that you can look up. If we set this to zero, we'll kind of get a close to invisible object instead of something that looks like solid glass. So we'll just uh, set that to zero and actually looks like 0 0.1 is the lowest value I can get, okay? So uh, that's that. Let's save this for comparison, and here we go again. All right, here we go. My bad, guys. I stand corrected. Uh, we are not supposed to set the value all the way down. We're supposed to set the value all the way up, okay? If you set it all the way down, you will get something that looks a bit like chrome. If you set it way up, we'll get the effect that I was talking about, okay? So let's try that again. All right, guys, here we go. Well, I'll just show you the difference between this render and our last one, and you can see quite different, okay? It gives a whole different feel. It looks like the glass is thinner, uh, where in our last example, it looked quite solid. So that's that. And then next we're gonna talk about is uh, BRDF, okay? Now, BRDF stands for Bidirectional Reflectance Distribution Function, but you can forget about that. Uh, I'll explain to you what it does, but before we do that, let's uh, set our ref uh, refraction back to 1.44. Uh, let's see, and everything else we'll leave as is, okay? So uh, when we go to our next render, it will look okay. So uh, BRDF. Now, um, the thing there is um, it's kind of hard to explain based on the object that we have in front of us, but I'll try anyway, okay? Let's say you are standing outside, it's a really sunny day, and you have a uh, just a plate of uh, flat glass, okay? And you're holding it straight in front of you, so you can look straight through it, okay? You're probably not going to see any uh, reflection, you're not going to see any refraction, you're just going to look straight through it, it's going to be fully transparent, okay? And once you start to tilt that glass and hold it at an angle towards the sun, you will see more reflectance going on, okay? Now, you can influence that manually by uh, setting values as to when you want that to be reflective at zero degrees, so looking, um, you know, um, at an angle or at 90 degrees. Um, but what you can do is you can just simply set this option for now, and when you do that, it will do that for you, okay? Um, I don't do this a lot. It's, you know, a bit too complicated for my taste, and I think it's really specific, but in some cases, if you, for example, want to uh, have a metal surface um, be very reflective uh, while it's not at an angle towards the light, you can use that setting, okay? So that is pretty much it, guys. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, uh, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.